porch has been a great joy to many people, not in the cold weather, of course, because it is wide open to the air, but in warmer times, uh, it has had many, many activities. Right now, we'll just look at the souvenirs of what's here. Uh, first, looking to this side, where you see another one of the old stoves, an iron stove, which my father translated into a table. And it does have the zinc on it, such as we mentioned in the kitchen. On top, however, we have many rocks chosen from outside where they were originally for many years. These rocks are of all kinds, honeycomb, fossil, ironstone, and various other sorts that are typically found around Texas. All of my folks, uh, my grandfather, Dr. R.K. Smoot, my father, uh, L.K. Smoot, my mother, my aunt, myself, all of us, know that rocks are the most antique of all antiques. And they are very appealing. We won't get into the geology of it right now, but some of these really are outstanding uh, 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 samples of the uh, geological formations in Texas. Up above the table, we have on deer horns, uh, from deer shot by my grandfather and my father, uh, we have various souvenirs of farm life. Uh, there are just regular old pulleys, which were over wells to pull the ropes, as you see. There are tongs to lift ice, uh, because they had ice only in large blocks. You see some uh, horseshoes up here. Uh, this is also for ice. Uh, over here is a cotton weight. It's partly obscured by my father's hat, but you can see the long angle of it and some of the weight measures hanging right there. We have another table full of rocks on this side, a smaller one again with zinc on top and various sorts of rocks as found typically around Central Texas. Here you see one of my father's creations. I keep talking about ice, which in my early days came only in large blocks, which had to be bought at the ice factory and carried on the running board of the car uh, to this place and then put somewhere where it wouldn't melt immediately. Well, my father built this entire box, this entire ice box um, for ice. Now it just has a clutter of stuff in it. <clears throat> well, in case you're curious, that was an ambulance as well as a police car going by. <laughs> anyway, this uh, ice box served as such for long years, and now it just provides an extra storage place and a side table for whatever is going on here. Larger rocks over here, fossils from up at Jollyville, a cave near Jollyville. Uh, much more about that if anybody is interested at a later time. Quite an interesting story, I think, how my mother got hold of these rocks. Uh, which were being dug out of the cave, unfortunately, uh, by a man who owned the property. Uh, he needed extra money, and so he began to sell these around town. And uh, we were able to uh, buy the fossilized rocks. I think that would not be allowed now, and it should not be because of the devastation, but we're trying to protect them. Uh, they do show all kinds of uh, horns and bones and other evidences of animals that were crushed into this cave somehow. The honeycomb rock right here, the uh, limestone with many, many holes in it, that was formed perhaps mostly in caves too or on hillsides. And the hills west of Austin used to be full of honeycomb. I think a lot of it has been taken away by this time. In fact, that also was sold by people who own the land out there for extra money. And looking outside, 
through the screen wire and the iron bars, you can see that most of the uh, flower beds around here are walled in, lined uh, by this honeycomb rock, uh, which is beautiful stone. In the corner table, Not only do we have some good examples of the honeycomb, but we have the remnants of um, my grandmother's um, fish pond. She had uh, one in the house and three or four outside. These objects, which you see, were inside her fish pond for the fish to swim through. And uh, this little one up here with the castle on top was the one that most attracted me when I was a child. In fact, uh, when I was very small, they had a sand pile outside for me up there under that big elm tree. And these objects from my grandmother's um, fish aquarium were up there. I took them up to the sand pile and had a lot of fun building sand castles around them. We're looking now at another uh, table of my father's creation. This one, not originally a stove. He built the whole thing, including the legs and whatnot, and covered it with zinc, as, as usual, you would expect. And this serves many, many times for uh, food to be uh, served in buffet style and various other purposes as well. These wicker chairs, rocking chairs, were my mother's purchase in Cameron, Texas, Milam County, before she and my father married. There was an itinerant furniture maker going through the country making these chairs. My mother bought three of them and brought them down here with her when she and my father married. Uh, I remember, I was old enough to remember when another itinerant furniture maker came through, admired these, and offered to build as many more of these as my mother wanted. So she contracted with him to build two more rocking chairs and a kind of settee. But he said he would have to take one of the chairs as a uh, model to copy and she allowed him to do that on the promise, of course, that he would produce the other two rocking chairs and the settee. Well, he and the rocking chair both vanished, and we never heard from him again. So it's one of those lessons we learn. A more intriguing chair is this one, which has another story behind it, because, you know, true life is always more interesting than fiction. It happened when the Richardson house was over there, just east of this property, behind all the trees that maybe you can see out there. The youngest of the Richardson children, a daughter, had had an appendectomy, which in those days was considered a very major operation. Nowadays, it would be uh, very simple in most cases. Anyway, this girl, teenage girl, was not getting along very well, and she had a long period of recuperation. So they had Mr. Weigel, the elder Mr. Weigel, who came here originally from Germany, to design and build this invalid's chair. That's what they called it, an invalid's chair. Not a lounge chair, but an invalid's chair. And uh, the daughter spent many of her hours stretched out, as you see can be done, on the porch, the gallery of the Richardson home. This chair is operated, incidentally, by putting one's heels into this long bar, sitting down in the chair, stretching out with your own feet until it becomes horizontal. And all the way through, your own heels on the bar control the uh, stretch of it and the folding up of it. It's very comfortable. I've even slept in it, and so I heartily recommend the chair as um, a, a wonderful piece of engineering, really. The only bad point about it is that anybody lying down 
putting hands right here may find themselves short of fingers when the chair folds up because this becomes a vice and uh, can cut pretty badly. Uh, there's, as far as I know, there has been only one other of Mr. Weigel's chairs like this in Austin. It was for a long time at what was the old fire station up on uh, North Guadalupe. I believe that has been taken over for practice purposes by the ballet, Austin Ballet Society. Not sure of those details, but anyway, it was at that fire station uh, where the other chair was. I have not seen it there for many years, however. Coming on this way is a bench which my father made from scratch. Uh, he made the um, framework of it and he made the latticed back and likewise the seat. And then my mother provided the uh, cushioning. Now that cushioning, if you could feel it, would have little metal coils all the way through so that in hot weather, when someone is sitting on this, there is ventilation all the way through underneath you and at the back of you through these metal coils, which have lasted very well. So where did they come from? Well, we always believe in recycling, and we did have in those days no air conditioning in the automobiles, so we always had seat covers in the automobiles to protect the upholstery. And then when we were ready to trade in the car, we took out the seat covers and the upholstery was brand new and helped sell the car. At any rate, uh, the seat covers we had at that time had this ventilation of the coils. And so when we took it out of the car, my mother said, oh, we're not going to uh, throw that away. She didn't know what she was going to keep it for, but we kept a lot of things that way. And then eventually she decided to make this uh, a cushion, and it has been a splendid ventilation in hot weather. At this point, you see Mrs. Smoot's, Grandmother Smoot's laundry basket. Uh, it's <laughs> much the worse for wear and it's all womp decided, leaning the way it does. But it's interesting wicker, and um, I'm glad we've kept it. I like to look at it and remember that my grandmother, when taking care of her family, had her laundry stacked up in that. Just above it, the wreath showing the cotton uh, is a little bit of a symbol from our farm in Milam County because that cotton was grown on our farm. Up above, in haphazard fashion, you see other deer horns. Uh, they're over the house in various ways. Now, when men went hunting in those days, it was not for sport just to accumulate deer horns, and it was not just to brag about the ones they had uh, killed, but they really did kill for eating, and they did not uh, kill just to destroy and accumulate. <coughs> Here are some of our largest rocks are to be seen. Uh, the one in the middle, obviously a fossil, a large fossil rock. And on either side, the, the, uh, uh, the permanent rock, the, uh, the uh, trees you see, they actually are petrified trees. Uh, and they are, of course, very, very old. They came from Milam County, too. There was a place in Milam County, a hill, a cone of a hill, which was called Sugarloaf. And in my childhood, it had petrified wood and all kinds of strange plants on it. Before I was grown, it had been stripped of all these rocks. And uh, it's a shame in a way, and yet, of course, I hope people are saving them the way we're saving these. At this point in the porch, you see school desks, the real thing from a far off time. These were school desks in a country school right after the turn of the century. My mother, before marrying my father, was a teacher and did teach in many of these country schools. 
as well as some of the city schools, such as out in Stamford in West Texas, and Cameron and so forth, later here in Austin. But up the road from Cameron, at a wide place called Ben Arnold, that is uh, two words, two names, for a person, a man, B-E-N-A-R-N-O-L-D. At Ben Arnold, she taught in the country school. And the time came when the highway department decided to widen the highway right there and destroy the school. But they had enough feeling and sensitivity to send out word to all the people in the area that the school would be demolished and all of its contents lost. So anybody wanting the building or anything in it should come at a certain date and they would arrange to um, let them have it. So we sat up there and uh, got the two desks from the very school in which my mother had taught. Uh, the seats do pull up like this, you see, uh, to let the uh, student go in and to make it easier to clean underneath. There are the holes for the ink wells and the little uh, uh, recessed place there for the pens. Right now I'm drying some peppers and okra out here on the little desk, so uh, that's the strange decoration that you see. On this end of the porch are some rocks which many people find particularly intriguing. Uh, almost everyone who's never been here before who goes in, comes in or goes out this door stops to ask about these round rocks, the large round ones. These are geodes, this one and the one over there, geodes. Most of us have seen geodes in rock shops in a much smaller version and perhaps cut in two. Now, various geologists have asked me to let them cut these two to see the beautiful interior. Well, <clears throat> I figure they're so intriguing in their huge size and I'm not sure they're beautiful inside. So to this point, I have not allowed them to cut these rocks. They were found in Milam County about 20 feet down where we were hand digging a water well. The reason I'm doubtful about the beauty on the inside is that there was an entire nest of these geodes, except all the others besides these were the smaller ones, about like this. And the small ones were malformed. Some of them were already half open and some uh, sort of uh, pressed out of shape. The ones that were half open are not pretty inside. And so um, I just don't want the oddity of these destroyed when we're not positive that they would be uh, really beautiful inside. The rock in the middle is uh, another fossilized piece and it has some striking examples of bones and uh, horns and other pieces of animals and plant life too, plant life as well. These two iron benches right here are original to the family uh, bought here in Austin, but this is the old, old heavy kind of iron. Nowadays you can buy um, iron chairs and settees which are light enough to be picked up with one hand. They're made of aluminum. But these are really cast iron and they are extremely heavy. I used to be able to, to lift at least one end, but I can't budge it now. Um, a strong man could, of course. They are, again, relics of an older day when things were made to last, really intended to last. Here you see three of the old coal scuttles that were used for years and years and years through the house because the house was heated only by fireplaces. There are seven fireplaces in the house and each fireplace had to have its uh, full set of equipment. It's um, pokers and it's shovels and, and uh, <coughs> coal scuttles. And so these three are down here. As we move elsewhere in the house, you may see other coal scuttles still sitting beside fireplaces on the hearth. So we'd better go inside and go upstairs and see what else we can find up there.